I'm Katrina. And I'm Jack. And this is Portals to Hell. Enter the Underworld. For this investigation, we're heading to one of my favorite places, Weston, West Virginia, Trans-Allegheny. Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum uh, is a massive, massive old mental health hospital, and it is terrifying. Oddly enough, the entire property is 666 acres. With 13 buildings. Oh, so it's just ticking all the boxes right there. Yeah, there's like no way it wouldn't be haunted. Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. You're they didn't do themselves any favors. Totally asking yeah. for it. Rebecca is the owner of Trans Allegheny, and she's owned it for over a decade, and she's really the one who saved it from being torn down. The most disturbing thing about this facility is that thousands upon thousands of lobotomies occurred there. And it was also the kind of facility where you could drop a family member off there if you were just tired of them and you were oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, they're crazy. You know, there's a theory in um, kind of paranormal investigating called the stone tape theory. And that is certain buildings made of specific materials um, will hold on to the energy of that place um, just as a tape recorder will hold on to the sound. So back in the 80s, um, when the hospital was still functioning, this was the kind of facility that if you were criminally insane, you could be sent there. This we call the bedpost murder room. We had two violent patients in here uh, with a person who was mentally impaired. And you know, he was known to be one of the sweetest patients out there, but every now and then he would have an outburst and that's how we ended up getting into this room. Now the other two patients were not nice people. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So basically they tied a, a sheet around his neck, threw it up around a pipe, and would basically raise him up in the air until he would pass out and then they'd let him back down. They laid this guy down on the floor. They had a steel bed in here, put the bedpost on his head, and as one held him there, the other one jumped on the bed until it pierced his skull and brain. Oh. That is horrific. So messed up. That is horrific. So when we were touring with Rebecca, she took us to a part of the hospital uh, that actually had some really interesting activity as far as people picking up on a woman named Jane. They were getting this through EVP sessions, through ITC communication. And because of that, Rebecca is such a history buff that she's been diligently going through all the death records and all the patient records as much as she can. Four years ago, I was able to get these historic books which record all the, the deaths basically and the people being admitted. And I find a Jane Harvey that she had killed herself. Where, where was her room, do you know? Um, we believe it's one of these right here. So we have something really cool that we can use for our investigation tonight. This is a piece of artwork done by one of the patients. So it was actually made by one of the murderers from oh. the Bedpost Murders. We can use this as like a trigger object. Michelle Bellinger is a psychic medium. I've known her for a very long time, worked with her many, many times. And we really thought that she would be a great asset to this investigation to see if we can get any idea of what exactly might be going on, why these entities are still here, and we took her throughout the whole building. And the places that she really hit on was Jane's room and the bedpost murder room. We know there was a woman here who committed suicide. The owner needs to know the room. We're on the right floor. So this is where she did it, at least the floor. I just keep seeing off green or off blue, like a pale room. I keep wanting to go that way. OK, there is a room there. This is the woman, the woman who, who did, who did something. And you see the room being a... Uh... Somewhere between blue or green. It's really quite ugly paint. As far as the bedpost murder room, she completely described the entire scene. Um, something that wasn't widely known about him, that's really only known to a few people that work at Trans Allegheny, is that it's believed that Dean was mute. Um, and she picked up on that. There's, there's an intelligence haunting here. Like, this one seems nonverbal. And I just keep seeing him on the floor, like looking up, like he's, he's from a prone position. When Michelle was kind of informing us that there was certain entities in the room, 
I did get spooked, especially with what happened once we went back to the bedpost murder room and conducted our investigation using the REM pod. I, to this day, can't explain that. Dean, is that you? Dean, if that's you, we need to know that you're here. Can you help us figure that out? Light. Based off of Michelle's reading and based off of history, we knew that Dean was childlike, that he had um, you know, an affinity to play, and that based off of Michelle's reading, he might interact more if it's something, more of a game. So we really wanted to set something up that was game-like, childlike. Do you like us being here, Dean? Having somebody to talk to and play with? I'm gonna try something, okay? Dean, do you know who this belonged to? Do you know who this is? Dean, did we scare you? Can you come back? Okay, I'm gonna take it away, okay? Because I think maybe it's upsetting you. Okay, we put that away so he can't hurt you, okay? The fact that when we brought the mask, mm -hmm. you know, close to the REM pod and it, Dean stopped communicating with us, that's not fake. We did not stage any of this. This was not us doing some trickery for the old, you know, here's, here's one we made earlier TV. Like, <laughs> no, this is, that was, I mean, everyone, our sound guy, our camera guys were like. Yeah, for that to go off as much as it did in the succession that it did yeah. is very bizarre. If we're going off of what Michelle talked about, uh, Michelle very much believed that there was a portal, an opening for stuff to come into this space. So, I mean, I think if we're going off of her word, then yeah, then it's definitely a possibility. But I think more to Trans Allegheny's point is that, you know, there's just so many layers of history that have happened there. Suicides, murders, um, you know, all of that, and people just being treated very poorly that, you know, if we're looking at just traumatic events, I mean, there's no better place to have traumatic events yeah. than a place like Trans Allegheny. There was a lot of them. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to more Portals to Hell and behind the scenes action at Travel Channel Go.